<laughs> Welcome back. Let's uh, see what's on the newspapers this morning. Business finder, cocoa, 2,600 fixed as minimum price per ton from next season. Uh, also on the BNFT, new cocoa price push stakeholders to meet again on July 3 in Abidjan. Now, daily guide this morning, photographs of the alleged uh, kidnappers. We got them, eight Canadian kidnappers grabbed and uh, the tardy girl's abductor in court. Uh, that's on the guide. The Guinean Times has the photographs of the two ladies. And dramatic, that's how it put it. Police rescue two Canadian ladies. Arrest eight suspected kidnappers. Also here, we're told that limited voters registration takes off June 17. And um, uh, that story is captured by the Tiny Daily Graphic. Also has that same story. Uh, kidnapping of two Canadians, eight arrested photograph of the eight here. Uh, Ghana could have female leader soon. The president certainly will talk about that. My guest to do the talking this morning, a deputy communication director of the NPP, Kamal Dean Abdullah is here. Kamal, good morning. Good morning, Bright. I hope you're doing great. I'm terrific, mm. and I guess you're doing well too. I'm fine too. Thanks great. so much for joining us this morning. And then MP for Tamongo, a member of the NDC, Onawada Mutawakilu. It's also here. Good morning. Good morning. Hope you're doing great too. I'm doing fine. Thanks for your time with us. Certainly, we we'll have to start with the, uh, what the time says. Uh, dramatic. Police rescue two Canadian ladies. Arrest eight of the suspects. That story is also captured in the Daily Graphic. It says that eight suspects have been arrested by the security agencies for their alleged involvement in the kidnapping of the two Canadian women at Ahonjo in Kumasi last week. The suspects include five Ghanaians and three Nigerians who were picked up at Kenyasi, a suburb of Kumasi, at dawn yesterday uh, following the security intelligence gathered. The Minister of Information, Kujo Ponkoma, uh, who briefed the press in a cry yesterday on the arrest, declined to name the suspects. He said the operation was carried out by Ghana's security agencies without the involvement of any foreign uh, assets. That's how the paper put it. Uh, he mentioned national security, the CID, the Ghana police, the BNI, the Special Weapons and Tactics Unit, that's SWAT, and the Defense Intelligence as agencies which took part in the operation. Uh, so that's the story uh, so far. Come on, let me give you the first bite of this. Well, uh, kudos to our security uh, agencies. Um, they've done well. Is that apt description? Well, perfectly well give commendations where it's due, mm. give condemnation where it's due as well. That is the mark of a good citizen. That is why when the President of the Republic of Ghana, during his investiture, Nana Adodanko Kufado, admonished us to be spe not to be spectators, but be citizens of this country. As part of our duties, we need to ensure that at least what is not going right, to the extent that our constitution even tells you that you can demonstrate against it, we speak out to correct the wrongs. That culture must be corrected. Today, if the same institutions that are supposed to ensure that the right thing is done, and they have done the same, let us commend them and urge them on. National Security, I want to say very good morning to you ably led by the Minister for National Security, my good uncle, Honorable Kandapa, wherever you are, silent worker, composed, focused, I say good morning to you and your team. Right. We woke up to a very sad news somewhere on the 4th or on the 5th of this month, where we're told that some two Canadian girls who were in the country to embark on some volunteer job had been kidnapped or were kidnapped as it were the swiftness with the swiftness with which the information came to the public and of course to the authorities in terms mm -hmm. of security agencies i believe is supposed to be commended and was laudable and i believe that when we volunteer information swiftly and accurately as such of this country mm. to the institutions that we have earmarked to do certain job for us trust me we at the end of the day will be top-notch in terms of our developmental process 
Why? We're in this country. When you take Act 720, the Whistleblowers Act, under his able leadership, President John Ajikum Kufuor, he got a parliament of Ghana to pass this law, reason, looking into the future, so that when you are an inhabitant of this country, whether citizen or not citizen, but lawfully inhabitant of this country, who sees something going wrong within your own vicinity or community, you rely on this law and ably inform the authorities. How well are we using the citizens of this country? The Whistleblowers Act is a law. We're not using it. If some are using it, fine. The law even says that explicitly you could use it or, of course, uh, covertly, you can also use it. Inform them quietly and let them move on. Bottom line, I believe the security agencies got to where we are today. Mm trying to be happy or we are happy about these, you know, um, people who have been captured or arrested and these girls who have been rescued. We all been happy about it today is because they have had very cogent and accurate information to help them in the delivery of their job. And that's a great one. But see, Bright, let us broadly look at this matter and take it away from politics as some people want us to do. Bright is a dangerous trend. And it's a very dangerous trend. Look, crime knows no barrier. Crime knows no Bright's family. Knows no Kamal's family. Knows no uh, Adam Mutaokil's family. No. Relating to Cherponi recently, the MP for Cherponi was invited to a program on Joy News, another TV station here. He sat there to talk about the disturbances in his region. Little did he know that someone who had been affected and a video was to be played was his own direct sister. I am telling you how sometimes passionate we must appear with some of these things. He didn't even know. When the video played out, he said, this is Doris, my own sister. And he broke into tears. It tells you when it happens. It never knows anybody. Health issues, security issues, please. We should try as much as possible to take politics completely away from this. If it happened yesterday, mm. that Kamal was actually out there speaking for, uh, using it for politics. And it's happening today that my brother Mutakil, which he's about to, about to do, I am preempting him and I know he's going to do it. <laughs> my brother Mutakil is going to do, then the two of us should start learning that there is that floating voter out there who is listening to you and I this morning. There is that objective mind out there who is watching you and I this morning. Who knows that NPP and NDC cannot take us for a ride? Let me pick your mind on this. You, yes. You, you are talking about taking, it, taking politics out of it. Should the information ministry, which, of course, the minister who is a politician, should he have allowed the, the security agencies to make the announcement of the rescue? Well, you see, you see when I was coming, as if I knew this, I sat down in my room early morning around 3 a.m. and I was perusing through whether or not the information ministry reserved the right to come and speak on this matter or not. And I will say emphatically, yes. Okay. But this is an mean, oppression. This mm. is an oppression. Okay. We understand. Which was carried out by the national security outfit of this country. With the police, the BNI. Wait, wait. But uh, however, however. And hey, all these institutions have PR I, I, departments. When you understand me, you know, national security outfit, you should understand. Mm. It is an embodiment, an integral part of the government process. We have a minister who reports, who, uh, and the team that mm. reports on security briefings to the president. The president has a mouthpiece. The mouthpiece of this government is the information ministry. Now, a briefing has been given. Deservedly to us, we're supposed to have an information. Then cabinet directs, because let's not forget, the ministry works on info, uh, instructions from the, the executive presidency. Presidency directs that information ministry tell the citizens of this country what has actually been briefed as what they're supposed to know. Again, let me Then they come out on this. Then somebody makes an argument that why is the police not talking? Why is that just been, What is come material on, is that we on. have the information? Let me, yes, let me pick your mind. I, mean, I just want to pick your opinion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is true the information ministry has to give us. Sure. But I'm asking that in order to depoliticize this, wouldn't you suggest that? Let us allow the security apparatus of this country to make this rescue or not, so that 
We, it is not government seen as no, the politician no, no, no. upon Chroma making the announcement. No. But the state institution that did the rescue making that announcement. Upon Chroma is a politician perspective when you look at it as a member of a political party mm -hmm. and for that matter represent a political party in parliament. And government. Wait a minute. That's why he's a politician. Upon Kuma is not a politician when he is paid by the state. He is taxed by the state to do a work. And the Ministry of Information is an institution of the state, which is subvented by the state. And he's supposed at the moment be a minister to you who is NDC or MPP, mm. or to you who is apolitical. Then upon Kuma comes to speak, then somebody says that he is a politician, he shouldn't have spoken. No. He, he didn't speak he, he, in his capacity as, as a politician. politician. He but spoke in his not capacity there by as a minister of, of the fact that he is a politician. No, why? That's who, why he got, who says he got the why? Position? President Kufuor made President Kufuor made uh, Park Sindu, who was a member of CPP and not MPP, as a minister in his government. Mm. Was, because, he, because was he was he serving politician. the state or he was serving PC? No. Why? We, as we sit here, we have had appointments by. He just, let me give you an example. John Dramani Mahama mm. appointed Dr. Seydou Dana. Was he a politician prior to that? The, the, so, uh, my the, argument the, is that it's not about you being... When you are serving the state, mm. you cease to be in a terms politician. of your actions and inactions, which is supposed to be professionally seen, to be a politician in that capacity. Because you are supposed to be paid by the state. You are, that's why you are vetted by parliament, which is a, a body that is a mixed body, where my brother will be there as an NDC. Somebody is not even NDC or MP is there. They vet you, whether or not you are fit for purpose in that position. So okay. please, those who are making this argument, they should stop it. Okay. The national well, security well, carries it, it, it out. It, it is their view. You think there's nothing wrong with that. But, but I want, I want to learn from this. I want us to continue okay, quickly on now, this. Let me get um, when I'm when when this with. good news came out, we all gloated and got happy about it to the extent that the embassy of Can the Can Canadian High Commission, which earlier on had come to tell us that look, security situation in this country is a bit bad because some certain things had happened. You understand? They gave travel advice. Quickly gave an information to the CBC in Canada, their broadcasting network, and said, look, the swiftness with which the government of Ghana has responded, the success story of what has happened, mm. this is, we are full of commendation to the government, full of commendation to Ghana for that matter. It is an image boosted. And I'm saying that the NDC, on the other hand, quickly wrote a statement out there the, oh, the person who has even been arrested is a uh, MPP. And that, trying to draw us into this thing. And I say it's dangerous. If we continue on that trajectory, it is not going to help us. In any case, Tafu MA Division Polling Station. One of the guys who had been arrested, who is, who, is, who is under arrest now, called Sedu. Sedu was the polling station agent for NDC there. We are not talking about that. We are not saying we should do politics. But, you but I, am, I am telling you the <laughs> facts. These are facts. These are facts on the table. Okay. And when you come and okay. issue a statement, okay. you force us to now tell you who okay. you are. Okay. statement. You. Why? Who? Well, your that, your communication of the Sami Jemfi. It's not. Sami Jemfi spoke about okay. it. Why? Well, I listened to him. Uh, Sami Jemfi spoke about it. And it's uh, bad. It's dangerous. Come on, I'm grateful. Let me get another moment. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Please, please come in. Thank you very much, and uh, good morning to our cherished viewers, and more especially the good people of Damongo constituency. You see, my brother... Well, my brother, Junapo, my, will be taking away. He should go and look you at the out. records. You are out already. Go and check the records. <laughs> you are out already. They, go and check the recent uh, uh, University of Ghana release. Uh, you know, I told Mutala on this set that he was going out. <laughs> hey, you went no, out. You are also going out. I'm saying that go and you look at the University of Ghana. <laughs> hey, I'm, hey, come on, I'm, I'm, I'm that's scaling fine, up. That's I'm fine. scaling up. That's fine. Widen that's the fine, margin by fine. the grace of the people of Damango Constitution. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, first and foremost, MPP came to government by condemning. President Mama, that there's so much insecurity in this country, and that when they come, they'll put things in place so that security will be a top notch. Unfortunately, immediately they took over power. Their vigilantes group started seizing property, uh, the workplaces, be it the Temamoto way, and all. They started creating insecurity because when they were in, posi in opposition, the vigilantes they trained thought that the gov uh, government now, and therefore Ghana, is their personal property and they could do anything. That was the first failure of President Anna Kufuado. Subsequently from 2016, in terms of crimes, it has gone worse. And the issue of kidnapping, let me narrow now, didn't start today. 
It started the immediately they came and started worsening from August 2018. When the Takura Day girls, the ladies started vanishing. And a number of records of uh, kidnappings has been recorded and has been admitted that there is an increase. I recently heard the police saying about 30, and they, 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 they looked into it and gave the statistics, and it was general that there was an increase, and that catapulted to uh, the Canadians. I could see how my brother was saying we shouldn't politicize it. And one, while I thank the security agencies, one thing the Minister of Information forgot to praise was the pressure from Canada or the releases from Canada, Australia, and UK that got this government frightened because the international reputation is at stake. Can you imagine? How to, why do you have to So the first tank goes oh, to no. the no, international no. bodies, the countries, Australia, Canada, and UK. He doesn't believe in himself. The pressure they put in made the politician to sit up mm -hmm. even and give the security the necessary and tools to, be an alternative. to oh, function. Dean, please, allow please. And you realize that when the Minister of Information was speaking, he wasn't speaking to Ghanaians. He was speaking to where? He was speaking to those bodies. To Nigerians. And he said, Ghana, we told <laughs> the world that Ghana is safe. He was responding to this statement put up by these countries. He believes in him. So that tells you that the work that has been done and giving the security the opportunity to do it the way they should do it is because of pressure from this international, uh, this country. So first and foremost, why is it that those that have been incurred, they are Ghanaians. There is a slow pace to it. It said there are two oh separate uh, issues. Please, are please. They, are these separate issues? Look, if you take everything serious at serious. any point in time, oh, no, no, no. you will dig to, into it. To the extent of the CID boss holding a press conference and telling the whole world that they have located these girls and soon they will be brought to their parents. Only a few weeks or days later, backtracking and even telling Ghanaian, insulting Ghanaian that we didn't understand her statement. That was an insult to Ghanaians. <laughs> and the Minister of Information has no problem with that. He's comfortable with that. I think that just as we give seriousness to these uh, two uh, Canadians, we must equally give the same. But this government has that uh, attitude where they see their own not to be relevant. And it is clear in the case of Asian Wai, while our own younger brothers and sisters are being arrested for doing illegal mining, the senior minister is defending Oh. Is it just so trivial? And that we need a money so he can break the laws it's of so Ghana trivial. and go scot free. I'm just setting an example too. Hmm. The lady who uh, engaged himself, herself, the Chinese, in illegal lumber, have you heard of it now? Because it's not a Ghanaian. Okay, for Ghanaians, this, this government doesn't take Ghanaians as people they should take serious. Nana Kufuadu think that for Ghanaians, oh, no problem. Oh. Anything can happen to them. Member of Parliament, but Damangu is speaking like this? Because the attitude towards rescue Ghanaians is not the same attitude towards foreigners. <laughs> and that is the system we are now. Two, should the minister hold a press conference? I told you already, he had the press conference. When he says there's nothing wrong. I'm it saying he had the press he conference says, yeah. because he's a politician. And he need to assure the three countries that have issued the travel warning to Ghanaians. Mm. That was the reason why he came. You, you disagree all with the things that he, he is All other, the official. police, the security mm. should have taken over to brief Ghanaians what they have done.
Uh, as I said, because of this country's issue warnings, he needed to do it so that to build confidence over again. But Ghana, we are in serious crisis in terms of security. Mm, and if we don't take time going towards these elections, it will be difficult to manage this country. You see? And I want to give Nana Kufuado this advice. Ghanaians are equally important. <laughs> and therefore, his effort to now salvage himself from the security crisis we are must be given to Ghanaians as well. Uh, right. Let me, uh, uh, Kamadi, let me, let me yes, introduce, I'll get you okay, to come response. in. Um, we just been joined by the acting general secretary of the, uh, uh, the party that was 70 years yesterday, CPP yesterday had a huge celebration, CPP has 70. A copy of the convention that was launched right in front of me. James Kabila Bonfe has just uh, joined us. Kabila, good morning. Good morning, Bright. How are you? I'm well. Mm, Still looking up to my meeting with you. Yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> and how was the the launch and uh, all that happened yesterday? It was refreshing mm. um, and indeed gratifying mm. that we had a very good day. We're starting with the cake cutting ceremony and. Um, at the, the, the relaunch of the convention newspaper, we were privileged to um, have received delegations from the New Patriotic Party, the National Democratic Congress by my own uncle and General Secretary um, Johnson, I said, the MPP was represented by a friend, I say, is a comrade in the wrong party, mm. uh, Kujia Fari, who is the uh, director of protocol. And um, the PPP was represented by their chairman, uh, Ni Alutebu Hammond, uh, my good brother and friend, Bernard Mona, mm. represented the People's National Convention. And the uh, UFP, you know, Nana Jinim Bwati, a.k.a. Jataba, mm. was also, you know, uh, present. We invited all the former presidents. Unfortunately, only former president uh, Kufo sent um, his representative. But we were in touch. The others, they had difficulty not coming themselves. And I think they had difficulty getting appropriate people to represent them. Mm. It was good that we held that function and uh, you know, engaged minds about the history of the CPP, the founding of Ghana, where we are today, and the need to revisit the question of our sovereignty our independence, and of course the right to choose how to be governed and how well we want to live. And I think that it is important to appreciate that the CPP has done a lot of these things before, um, even though in a different era, but has the capacity to do it again. And I think that ties in with what you were discussing. Exactly. You, you have to take a bite of that. Yeah. Yes. The, so, it, I, I thought uh, I was going to have my quick No, no. Let, 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 let's get uh, him well, once to speak. Once I have been let, let's get him Let me do speak. it and then you have uh, the last yeah, bite. Uh, there will no, be, no, no, be reaction. No, no, that's fine. So, okay. He's already spoken well, on that. He's spoken already. Kamila, <laughs> so uh, the rescue what Canadians and then uh, the issue of security and all that. A success we should celebrate? It's an attainment. I don't know whether we should call it a success because I believe in the Spartans spirit of war that you never celebrate over a battle until the war is over. And we are at war. We are at war and we will forever be at war with wrongdoing, with people of ill will, ill faith, bad faith, and people who mean evil for a country such as ours. We have experienced issues of wrongdoing throughout our history. But as to how we are prepared to combat, to deal with it, but more importantly, to prevent or preempt its occurrence or incidents is a matter of crucial importance. Intelligence around the world geared towards finding ways and means to prevent crime from happening. And it is based on the level of sophistication. Because at the end of the day, we all do know 
that when people of ill will are planning their evil deeds or their, their um, wrong doings, they are always a step ahead of the intelligence community, the security services. But if you have a mechanism and a framework that is forward-looking, mm. which is geared towards research, research intelligence, you are able to identify certain signs and signals such that even before they are triggered, you are able to be there. And of course, you even have implanted among sports what they call drivers of insecurity or triggers of insecurity. You have got people deliberately planted there, planted amongst them, that they would be able to you know, give information and all that. At the end of the day, intelligence is about information trade. I told you that. It's about information trade. Sure. So, please, it rests with the citizenry to cooperate with the intelligence agencies to work. But you see, that intelligence trade also builds on trust that the security managers, handlers, must be trustworthy. Why would I go and give information to my big brother, Munta Akilu, when I know that he's going to expose me to uh, uh, um, Kamal Deen? At whatever price, whatever fee, that uh, whatever uh, um, in, you know, I mean, uh, incentive that he's going to give me. Why would I risk my life? I won't do that. How trustworthy are our security officers, men and women? How trusting are they? How competent are they? How are, ab are they able to analyze, assess, and evaluate? information when it is put on their table. That is why recruitment into the security services must not be done on any whimsical and caprice grounds of anybody. We need to be sure that the people who are even uh, recruited into the security agencies have the passion, the desire, the willingness, and if you like, are, way, are, 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 are ready to sacrifice themselves for that job. Because, you see, no matter how intelligent you may be, no matter how well informed you are, if you are not passionate about your work, you are always going to have an issue going the extra mile. Mm. And that's what makes the difference. So you see, uh, in the specific terms, I right. think that Ghana, we have failed over the years to build state security regimes. And that is why, particularly NDC, MPP, and you always laugh at them. Once they go into a position, this entire security setup is bankum. It's useless. When they are in government, it is the best. What kind, of, what kind of picking and choosing is that? Look, what has happened in terms of the... Uh, the rescue the, of the, the two. The, the rescue of the two Canadians and the still unrescued uh, Takradi girls are two different scenarios. We should stop comparing apples <laughs> and pies. They are not. <laughs> you see, these are all issues that border on suspected kidnapping. They are yet to be proven as kidnapped cases. And we need to even be very careful in terms of the narrative and the kind of words that we use. It's important. Now, what, under what circumstances were they, I mean, and in suspicion, pick, uh, kidnapped? The two scenarios aren't the same. The actors aren't the same. The, uh, if you like, the security officers working on them. And don't, don't lump them together. We are all politicians. Even Kamal Dinu is coming from the MPP. He's not in government. He's not a state officer. Unless he's, he's been given an yeah, appointment. He's he's I don't not, I'm, not, okay. I'm not. You just told me. Well, well, but, you but, see, but, but, but okay. the point, I'm, the point, I'm, yeah. the point I'm trying to make is that we are all politicians, but in terms of our specific tasks, we are different. And so, you see, the security infrastructure that you have, if you go in there, you have specific officers who are assigned specific cases. Who are the officers working on the Takradi girls? Are they the same as the officers working on the Canadian issues? They are different. Hmm. They will never be the same. So when I say that, don't put them in one pigeonhole and use that to do your assessment and, I mean, pronounce judgment on, that's what... However, 
There are lessons that we can draw from all that. I believe that and from what the police have told us. I don't think it's just the information minister who has spoken on this matter. The police, PRO, on my way here, I listened to him. Uh, ACP, uh, okay, I, I, a clue, a clue. Okay. I listened to him on Radio Ghana, turned an interview speaking on this subject. I share that I disagree with the information minister speaking on this matter. I share in that. But I'm saying that it has not been only the information minister. The police administration, through their PRO, have also spoken. And I've heard him speak. So you, 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 you my, agree my, that my the point state that institution has... should, have been the, should have made the announcement, huh? not the information no, minister. No, no, is, is, is that what you're saying? No, I am not... I am not uh, the information minister has a responsibility to speak on the matter. Mm. But I'm saying that I disagree with Honorable Muntawakil when he says that the information minister should not have spoken at exactly. all. Exactly. No. By saying that, oh. yes, but at the forefront of it, mm. for me, I'll, the first to have spoken I'll, on I'll, the matter. I'll get you the chance you to, see? to... No, no, no. Uh, I don't want to talk. I'll, I'll come to you, so I'll allow me. I'm supposed to... Yeah, you know, oh, oh, come on, Dean. You no, relax. Let, let Kabila... You have to okay. react. Let Kabila wrap up. You see, the system we are running... And all of you, both of you are complicit of that. The legal architecture of this, this, this country, what is grounded in the mm. Constitution 1992, you have made it difficult to separate the information minister from the police administration. Because at the end of the day, <laughs> Honorable Mutawakilu, you have, you, have, you have targeted the president. You have, no, mm. you have targeted the president mm. in this matter. Not so. He's not the ultimate. He is. Okay. But I'm saying that to the extent that the police will speak through their information, uh, sorry, their PRO, mm. the president and the arm of the government, the executive arm of government, under which the police work anyways, mm. may want to speak, except that I would have preferred that. Let me I would have preferred that. Let me I would have preferred that. Do you hear the man? Allow. You are coming in, so allow. We will clarify this. Kamila, let me quickly pick your mind for you to wrap up on on this. Gentlemen, a lot of the time, we speak the same language, but from different angles. That's what the CBP is telling you. Let us build consensus through tolerance and sincerity. Wrap up on this, then I go to Kamal. The argument was that we don't need to politicize this and then as for the that counter one, as for that one is a funny argument okay there and then the counter you, Kabila, please hold on <laughs> then the counter argument is that if that is the case then allow the state institution that did the rescue to make the announcement so that you take it away from that partisan, political cut for partisan, partisan it, that is the argument here quickly wrap up on this and then right come out I, I agree with you and that's why i'm saying that they are both guilty of that thing because they don't separate the state from their parties. We don't even have a party in government. And yet, hear them talk. MPP in government. NDC in government. Who says NDC forms a government? Your candidate, you Kamil, form the, forms the government. I'm grateful. Not your party. Uh, come on, uh, come in. Uh, see, Honorable Mutakilo. Was the tail okay. end of the question you asked, Kabila, mm. had to do with party colorization of national issues. Not necessarily to say politicization. Politics, generally, we all do in politics. A, political people even speak to political issues, uh, which I know. But I'm saying that where we seek to draw in party colorization, that to the extent that some suspects, okay, who have been arrested, okay, who are suspected to have been those who carried out those nefarious activities, are being signaled out and identified as this man is MPP, that one is NDC, that one is... I said this is unfortunate. Crime has no, I mean, knows no color. And all of us sitting here, no matter who you are, Article 17 of the Constitution tells you you are equal before the law. No matter who you are, with a great respect to the President of the Republic of Ghana, even if he falls short of the law, mm. the Constitution of Ghana comes after him. And it's clear. And I'm saying that if yesterday, in fact, I was humbly admitting to this particular cause, which Kabila just rightly mentioned, that look, if yesterday we in MPP, sought to take some of these things and color them in terms of partisanship. It was wrong. That's right. And Not if today, no, 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 no. 
And if today but he has made an admission, I've made an admission. He's made an admission. Is it not considering we need to move? Allow him to move. That person is making an admission, and you want to hold him. And I'm saying that if we are able to decipher, okay, between what is actually belonging to the state and is supposed to be viewed with such a spectacle and treated as a state matter. And of course, find solution to all of us, for all of us to move on, let's do it. But if we sit down and continuously try to do this MPP NDC 10, then of course, at the end of the day, we're all going to fall short and we're all going to treat So, so you said you, you I, heard, you I, heard now, now, Sami now Jensi he say that the well, suspect is a, a yes, all, you, 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 because he said I, I, he's not I, said anything. Why? Um, has not said anything. Yeah, he when? said he's not when? said anything like when? that. He when? sent you a text. Um, I yes. said, I, I am telling you me. that Sami Jenfi's mm. outfit, okay, mm. had spoken to the extent nothing. that they it's were nothing. saying that one of the guys who had been arrested was an, an MPP which, person. Which I've heard it. I've heard it. Was it a statement? I heard it. We can make it. We make all sorts of comments and statements on radio. Which radio station? So you heard it on radio? Of course, I heard it Which radio station? And I'm saying that, listen, after that you can go and then investigate it. But I'm telling you, I know what I'm saying. All right. S but since, right. Since you, right. you, you, since you have, cannot, you okay, you you go ahead and wrap to, up. To get I get honourable Muta to, to, to make my point. Muta Kilo, you see, it is an advice to all of us. When we sit down here and get people who are out there, of course, who are far, 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 far deeper than us, understanding how it works when it comes to national issues, with a good of respect, the Ghanaian voter has become complex. Let at the end of the day be objective on this matter. Okay, okay. I'm grateful. Let me let uh, that that mean that we take some, some, uh, we'll we'll take some, some comments uh, and go back. Peter. You know, uh, Honorable mm. Seven gave him issue. I told him that that was right. the issue. He, he, he said he said he can't identify the two. Two. That that is fine of denying what When I started my argument, when I started my argument, I was denying what he said. Since you cannot tell us, come on, Dean. Since you can't tell us where you heard it from, let's leave it here and allow him to. Go on. He denied. What we showed him. I'll say city. I'll joy. I'll say joy. Yeah. Which radio station you have not been? Sami is fine. That is why I started my my, 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 my yeah. this thing by first of all referring to their manifesto. That President Mama's era, there was so much insecurity. And that when they come, they will make sure that there is security in the state. You have set a standard to be measured. And I said the statistics so have wrong, shown that you it. have come done on, Please allow to that. Come on, Dean. Two, two you don't, you know, not that MPP has been in government before. NDC came to government. You politicize it. You are in government. You now say, okay, I'm in government. We shouldn't, de uh, we should depolitize. My brother we didn't get, grow. my brother we didn't grow. get me right. When I said that, the minister coming to give the, the, to announce it was based on the pressure from UK, oh. Canada, and Australia. He has a duty. And I said, he has a duty. if you listen to his statement, he was responding to the viewers are getting uh, that the political climate allow uh, the country allow him to talk. Safe. That is what I said. Which was necessary for him to do. Him that to is do. what I'm saying. But it was, you know, that the no, information is that he needs to do and that. And I made it clear. Yeah. That when he was making those statements, he never mentioned that the comment from these countries has actually gingered them. He doesn't have to do that. that. <laughs> but on a moment, I'll give you. You and I know diplomacy. He doesn't do that. Please, uh, no, don't disrupt him. Let him make his point. Okay, After him if he wants sorry, a, sorry, sorry, a reaction, sorry. you can And I said, <laughs> why is it that the, G, uh, the CID boss yeah. held a press conference yeah. and said that the Vic the, uh, the girls have been Found. located, yeah. and soon they will be brought to their parents. What has triggered her? And I said, after days later, he insulted by Ghanaians by telling Ghanaians that we didn't understand what he, she said. What, what point are you making? I don't even understand. You. What I say? No, no, she came out I'm and understand. said that I'm, she I'm, didn't. I'm Ghanaians okay. didn't understand when she said that they have been located. Okay, she said she said that to assuage <laughs> the pain of so, the pain. Of the pain. That is wrong. It was wrong. That she is wrong. That. Yeah. As a security Officer. person, yeah. that is wrong. Yeah. I agree. That is what I said. I so you must understand. No, but that, okay. that is that. The, the, no, no I, am, I am. But let me tell you. I, I am taking you'll be some measured, comments. You'll be measured by your manifesto. 
and we will never get away from it. Okay, I'm grateful. No manifesto I shall be You are getting wet. Gentlemen, let's allow our to read some of the comments. I shall please Good morning, Bright. So the very first comment here says, if Ghana is not safe, then NDC must try and put politics aside and join hands with the government. Otherwise, they will remain in opposition forever. Alimenta sent this one also and says, why will the information minister address the media whilst we have all the security couples in the country who were made to believe led the operations? Hey, Ghana, everything is now politics. Where are our institutions? That is the question he's asking. And Alassan Wanwana in Wa says, we have to thank Almighty Allah, government and the national security for getting the Canadian kidnappers. In fact, they cannot be, there cannot be a lasting solution to this kidnapping issue if we don't take pragmatic steps to check the way foreigners are entering the country, more especially Nigerians. This one says, good morning to you and your panelists. The NPP hates the truth when it is told. The fact remains that they place more value on foreigners than we Ghanaians who gave them the mandate to govern us. They have demonstrated that they don't deserve our mandate. So it's simple. We shall take our mandate back in 2020. The MPP should go and solicit votes from Canada and China. GM is coming. NS sends that one from Pando. Uh, this one says, right, tell Kabila that the CPP will bounce back if only the NDC is no more because 99.9% .9 of NDC members are from the CPP. So they should come and join us to champion the cause of the Nkuma. Uh, Ismaila sends that one from uh, Zongo. He says he's the Zongo Caucus uh, coordinator. Uh, this one says, good morning, TV3. Why are these NPP people intolerant? Please tell the NPP man that he should tolerate views from others. I'm a floating voter and I know Ghana is not safe, so they can do all the propaganda, but 2020 will decide. Geoffrey sent that one from Kumase. Good morning, TV3. NDC has never supported any idea that has been implemented by the NPP government. We will not allow them to come back to power with their arrogance and to share money among themselves. The same, pupils, uh, the same people who caused his defeat are still the people following him. NDC is not ready for power in 2020 with this noise every day. God bless Nana and his team. Victory awaits you in 2020. Uh, Francis sent that one from Garu. Uh, oh, Kamal be serious, fine gentleman. Uh, don't damage your political future because of NDC. Um, you are a young northern politician. Be careful of MPP and save your image. Don't allow yourself to be pushed in defending certain circumstances. Or say, sent that one from Tadi. Idi Adam Usman uh, sent that one and he says, So the MP for Damango stating that crime has increased under this government. Has he forgotten that under their watch, we had the first time ever um, armed robbers storming town in, in broad daylight in Damango. They were shooting guns and robbing people. Ask the MP whether he has never played a role in freeing criminals arrested by the Damango police, especially one murderer from Larambaga. Uh, this one says, uh, it is coming from Farouk uh, in Tema. He says, the kidnapper, Seydou Yakubu Mba, is singing like a country bird, and Sami Jemfi and the NDC people are crying like suspect. Uh, timely information is vital in fighting crime. So if you see suspicious acts, please report to the police. Ghana is safe under President Ekufuado. Let's say no to uh, no contribution, no chop NDC party. Mm. Uh, he says, regards course, to yes. Marita and Honorable Titus Glover. So those were some of the comments. We uh, the first and foremost, they should go to the Damango police. The daily record since oh, they are responding to the text messages. The okay. armed robbery have, oh, on the Damango mm -hmm. Fufilso Road. Okay, let's, you go to let's, the police station. Let's, you have statistics. Let's wrap up on the conversation. Uh, Kabila, you you came in late, so let me get you the chance to wrap up day. our conversation mm -hmm. for this morning. We are hitting the top of the hour very soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I I believe I believe that um, as a country, mm. we have a lot. To learn from ourselves. There's beauty and a lot of good in our diversity. It is not for nothing that we come with different backgrounds, different experiences, and different perspectives on our national dialogue. I sincerely believe that the biggest problem this country has today is our inability and our failure to congregate and rally around 
one unifying point, which is seeking solutions to our problems. Because there are a lot of great talents across the divide, and we all know it. Individually, when we meet, we know the quality we are made of. And yet, when we are speaking, we are so intolerant, we are so dismissive of each other, that we rubbish everything anybody says because it's coming from the other side. And that is part of our problem. The second thing is that over pettiness of partisanship is killing us. Look, the Western democracies, they have certain parameters and values that they agree on regardless which party they belong to. If we say we want to go the Western democracy line, which is not what I subscribe to, mm -hmm. I believe in the pre-colonial Ghanaian system of political consensus building, even though they had party interest, and they were there. That's what we should do. If we are copying them, let's copy them better. And I believe that this uh, um, insecurity issues, yes, they are there, they are real. Let's not pretend about them. Mm. Some of them are amongst us. They have always been with us. But the state has the capacity to respond as we have responded in this Canadian uh, abduction. And I'm sure that with the, uh, the, the Tecradic girls, we would find out. Finally, mm. I want to say this. The Convention People's Party at 70 has put forward an argument that we should build consensus in this country through tolerance and sincerity. Those two variables are key, tolerance and sincerity. Let us discuss our problems sincerely, dispassionately, without, you know, effusions and anger, and without trying to take the credit when the work is not yet done. And I believe that we would be able to do that. Lastly, lastly, we are inviting our brothers from the NPP to understand, and this will go to the NDC, because it's the two of them who are occupying parliament today, that is the second arm of government, that politics is not all about power. It's not all about holding positions. Mm. Because power and positions in themselves mean nothing if they are not geared towards the reconstruction of society. And already we are doing that. Abandoned and deprived <clears throat> children with disabilities left at the Osu uh, Accra Psychiatric Hospital is inappropriate. We feasted them to breakfast on, on Tuesday, June 11, as part of the 70th anniversary celebration. We brought orphans from the Osu Children's Home. Their case is deplorable. Parliament must do something about it. We yeah. must have a policy that will integrate and include these people. There have been arguments from the World Health Organization that we must have integrated education system for all these children yeah. because they are a part of us. And stop thinking and considering them uh, separately. On that note, I wish Ghana well. And I pray and believe that the CPP members listening across the country, you have been taxed. Mm. And your work is to rally around, organize, 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 and make the Convention People's Party come back to save this country from despair. In 2020. Right. Come on, please come. Yeah, I'm sure. 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 i am sure i am sure i am sure i am sure i in terms of issues that, of course, border on the nation and appears nationalistic. And that is my position, and it will not change. And I went further to say that we should not try to put party colorization to issues of security. Mm. In fact, and I gave an example of what the communication officer of the NDC, okay, sought to say after the arrest of those suspected kidnappers. On his Facebook wall, it's clear. He's denying it today. I just told her he has this penchant of saying one thing, and the next moment he denies it again. And one, well, I'll no, tell he, you. He, he did on not his, deny it. On he, his Facebook he, wall, it's He clear. says that the, the man is a known NPP activist. Uh, he, 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 he says that so is what So what did said. I say? And when you do this, and, and I'm telling you, I sat here and I told you that the man was the polling station agent for NDC mm -hmm. at NA Tafo Division Police Station. Everything. And I'm saying that we shouldn't do this to ourselves. In fact, okay. earlier on, it was the denial that he didn't even say anything like that. And I'm saying we don't have to do it. No, and his it, Facebook wall is clear here that breaking evidence. news, Seydou Yakubu, whatever, has been arrested as 
a leader of the group that kidnapped the Canadian girls. Said Yakubu Mba is a leading member of dreaded Delta Force of the ruling New Patriotic Party who stormed the KMA. Blah, 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 blah. He went on, mm. which is completely untrue. And okay. it's not true. So, you see, when we do this, we turn, we take away the relevance. Mm. The people who were arrested, there were some Nigerians as well. So, those Nigerians, are they MPP or NDC? Okay. No. What are we doing I am grateful. Honorable Dokele, wrap up for me. Yes. As I indicated, we we'll always measure you by your manifesto promises. So, you just lied and then... No. Uh, uh, I ask you to provide... You said your communication of evidence. I've just provided of evidence. What evidence is it? Uh, go to is that his face? Wall. Wall. That's no, his that, face. I have a different face. He is wrapping up. I don't Allow have him to wrap up. I have not seen it on my... <laughs> the Facebook book wall I have with him. Please. You are doing politics no, this morning. No, it's not politics. <laughs> you see... Please, please wrap up. We must, as a nation so seriousness to whatever we're doing. Uh, Kabila made building consensus. It's very important. Building consensus is when your colleagues provide evidence, uh, suggestions. You are not willing. Building consensus is when you have a development plan and we all know that this is where we're going. And then we all understand it. Yeah. Then we build consensus as how to achieve it. Not when you all of you have different manifestos with different approaches no. and with different ideas. And when a conflict you implement and there is a suggestion from, then you refer, you couldn't do anything. You cannot. That is where building consensus becomes a problem. If we are a party that is going to disturb the security of this nation, our chairman will not be responding to calls from the, the police. Unlike those times when even they pick one, they go and destroy uh, traffic lights. So if it comes to security, NDC is a peaceful party. And everybody knows. Okay. But the fact that you have a manifesto will always measure you to your manifesto pledges. Yeah. I'm grateful. He's a member of parliament for Damongo constituency, a member of the uh, NDC, right. Honorable Adam Mutawakilu. You might be interested in this. And Someone has just sent me a message, mm -hmm. and it's very important based on what uh, we have just said. Uh, quickly. He says, good morning, Kabila. I pray you good. I'm watching you live on TV3. In fact, let me clear your thoughts that there is a national inclusive education policy oh, okay, there in is. Ghana. Mm -hmm. It started four years ago. And still in use, but the knowledge on it is low. There is. I'm currently there is. conducting a survey on the policy. Deborah Jan Ponsa, apparently she's with the. Uh, yeah. There is inclusive of, education, of, except that the implementation is a challenge because the mm. teachers don't even know what they are. Uh, they are. They have to do. Yeah. Uh, so, so for the fact that we even have, them. we have it yeah. as part of yeah, our thinking. Yeah. Grateful. Kamadi is a deputy committee director of the NPP, and James Kabila Bonfe Kabila, acting general. Secretary of Can the you CPP. Do the right. <laughs> My mother, Lucy Amy, Ebna Eniwa Amy, one of the first female MPs in Parliament. It's today her birthday. It's today 80 years. Oh, wow. Madam Lucy Amy. Congratulations. So happy birthday. Happy birthday, Madam. We're grateful. Okay. Stay with us.